In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation and seeing if it's really worth your coins. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jensine, AKA Jungle Naps. And as you guys already know, we're gonna be taking a look at the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation. Now, right here, I've got the shade Mocha. This was uh, the only shade I could find that was similar to mine, so I'm crossing my fingers that it's a good shade match. I hope so, I hope so. But if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe if you like beauty reviews. I do beauty reviews for women of color, and also they're just really, really in depth. So if you like those types of videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. And uh, yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this foundation. And this is what the foundation looks like straight out of the box. It does have a little dropper, as you guys can see here. Now, NYX claims that you have the option of having sheer coverage or full coverage, depending on how many drops you use. So it's up to you. We're gonna test to see, you know, how that looks. And uh, they also have this at Ulta for, uh, retails for about $14. And as of this video, Ulta has a sale, buy one, get one 50% off. So if this is something you're interested in, you do have the option of getting that discount and it does work online. So I'm sure I'll have some links down in the description box if you guys are interested. Now, of course, I wanted to do this right. So I even got their foundation brush. It's a flat kabuki styled brush and it's got a little bit of a tip here. I'm assuming that's for getting into crevices around the eyes those hard to get areas. So, you know, is this necessary, the brush? Probably not, it retails for $14. You know, it's not exactly the most affordable brush, but I figured for the purposes of this video, I really wanted to make sure that I did everything, you know, in the appropriate manner so you guys could really see if this is actually a good foundation. Now, the finish is supposed to be like a velvety matte finish on your skin. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in closer and then um, we can get things started. So now you guys are really, really close. <laughs> um, so, all right, I'm gonna take this little dropper here and I'm going to add the foundation to the back of my hand and they say two drops it's supposed to be good but you know what that's only a little bit I need more I'm gonna add like five now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this on my finger and dot it around my face and then smooth it on with the brush by the way guys I've already primed I've used the Bobbi Brown vitamin enriched face base which is a moisturizer and a primer in one it's excellent you can always check out my review on that do, 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 do. oh hey check it out the shade actually looks uh, pretty pretty good if I say so myself so I can tell already drying quickly so I'm gonna work in sections so far so good the finish is looking nice okay guys so here is the foundation right after I blended it out and I have not set it yet. Notice the orange tone. I mean, just so you guys can see, this is my skin tone. This is how orange it is. So if you are thinking about the shade Mocha, it's very, it's got like a strong red undertone. If I was able to actually find um, other shades, I would have gone with something that has a more golden undertone. So just beware, if you're golden undertoned, you're gonna need to get yourself something that's um, a shade that has less of a red undertone. I'm not gonna give up on this yet though. Um, I do have some checks up my sleeve. I'm planning to go ahead and set it with my Dermablend Warm Saffron to see if I can lighten this up and bring some more of that golden undertone back. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm going to finish my makeup, then I'm gonna come back, we're gonna talk about a little bit about first impressions, and then I'm gonna do a flash test for you guys because I wanna see if this has any flashback. And then um, I'm gonna come back in a few hours with a little update because sometimes, you know, foundation oxidizes and all that jazz. So I wanna give you guys the full scope. So far, very, very first impression before we set it, it is very, very orange. Okay, babes, so I'm back. Now, look, I managed to save it, and that was because I took my Dimmer Blend Warm Saffron Setting Powder, and I also used a stippling brush, and I basically just packed that on there. That added some more of that golden undertone back to my skin, so it's not as dark and orange as it was initially, so that's a little tip for you guys if you have any foundations that aren't the right undertone or are too dark, you can always save it with a setting powder, a tinted setting powder, mind you. So, all right, it looks great right now. What I will say is I had to do a lot of work to make this foundation work. If you're gonna get a foundation, you just wanna put it on and keep going with your makeup routine, you know what I mean? You don't wanna have to do all these things to compensate and make it work for you. So what I also had to do, because I did notice that as I was nearing the end of my makeup, uh, it was highlighting some texture around my nose and around my mouth, and I had to use my MAC Fix Plus setting spray to make it kind of melt in. It wasn't as flawless as I'd hoped for, that velvety matte finish. It really had highlighted some of that texture. So if you're somebody that has a lot of acne or anything that is actually going to show on your skin with this foundation. Um, that being said, you know, comment you guys if you're using the NYX foundation. I wanna know what your experiences are down in the comments. Now in just a minute, I'm going to do a flash test and I'm gonna be showing you guys whether or not it has any flashback and all that jazz. Now, the first set of photos that I took is in front of all of my studio lights, and I took one from the front, and I took some also on each side. Now, you'll definitely be able to see the golden undertone of the Derma Blend setting powder that I used, and you know, I just, I couldn't resist using this today. I had to take it for another test drive. I love it, but I think that it actually looks really, really beautiful. Um, you know, these pictures are all with flash, so I think that it still looks nice. So I really wanted to go ahead and test this out in a low light environment to kind of mimic, you know, if you're in the club or somewhere dark and somebody takes a flash photo of you. And I did notice that the uh, golden undertone from the setting powder was even more evident. However, I still think that in all three of those pictures, it does look really pretty and um, I think that it stands up. Now remember guys, the actual foundation did have a red undertone, so when you do see the golden undertones, that is more from the setting powder that I used. And um, I don't think that this foundation at all causes any flashbacks, so that's awesome. Now, um, I would say, you know, if you are using the Derma Blend, make sure that you use a light hand. I used a stippling brush, so it was very, very light the amount of powder that I actually put onto my skin. Now, if you're just like kicking it on there, I think that, yeah, of course, it's gonna look really, really weird in flash photos, but I hope that that helps you guys make your decision if you're thinking about whether or not you want to try this foundation. Now, um, I will come back in just a bit to give you guys a wear test, and then I'm going to talk about my personal opinions and how I feel about the foundation. All right, so I am back. I've been wearing this makeup for about four hours, and here are my thoughts. Basically, I think this foundation does look really nice. I think for a drugstore foundation, it does pretty well. Is it my favorite foundation? No. Um, I'm not 
blown away. I don't feel like I have to run out and purchase every shade for every season of the year. However, I do really like how affordable it is. Now, in terms of shine control, I think it's done a really great job. Usually I would look a lot more oily. I look slightly dewy. I haven't had to touch up anything at all for these past four hours. And I really like that it hasn't creased in my smile lines. So for that, it gets an A+. Now, as far as the shade that I chose, you know, it is more warm and orangey than I would like, but Personally, I think that's a little bit more on me. I could have gone for a more golden undertoned shade. Now, um, I think as far as performance, it does really well. I'm not completely blown away by it and I don't suggest that you guys run out and purchase it. But I do think, you know, if you're looking for a more affordable option for something that's everyday, I think this would do just perfect. And um, the only thing that I really don't like is the actual dropper application of this. I just feel like it's kind of messy. I really like it when foundations come with pumps because I feel like it can just be a little bit more sanitary, you know. Um, that's the only thing that I just really didn't like. So again, if you guys have this foundation and it just doesn't come in the appropriate shade for you, I feel like you can always, if you need to lighten it, um, add a tinted setting powder like the Derma Blend or the Laura Mercier Medium Deep. I think that would work really well. Um, I'm gonna keep this foundation, I'm not gonna return it. I like it, but I'm just gonna say it's not in one of my top favorites. It's just, it's just all right, it's just all right. But I wanna know what you guys think of this foundation down in the comments, share your experiences, and don't forget to check out my top foundations for women of color playlist. I've got some really good ones. If you're looking for a new foundation to try out, be sure to check out those reviews. And I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.